Over the next couple of months, the last of NATO and ISAF troops will withdraw from Afghanistan. It's been 13 years plus since the so-called war on terror. Where is Afghanistan today? And more importantly, what about the future of that country? What role do regional players like India have in an emerging Afghanistan? To discuss this and a whole gamut of issues on the Indian Standard Time this week, we have with us the Honorable Ambassador of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, His Excellency Shahida Muhammad Abdali. Welcome to IST and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. Thank you very much. All right, so let's start off with the big burning question that confronts your country as well as confronts uh, people in this region and beyond. The last of the NATO and ISAF troops are going to withdraw over the ne next couple of months. I want first your assessment, your thoughts as to what the last 10 years have meant for your country? Well, uh, very important, very important question that uh, what we did in the last 13 years, yeah. rather, uh, were very crucial for Afghanistan. And you know the, the history as to what made uh, this whole mission um, in Afghanistan um, uh, so relevant. Uh, after 9-11, as you know, That's the whole uh, international community finally heard uh, um, uh, what was needed in Afghanistan to go against terrorists and their supporters. Afghanistan, the last 30 years, achieved a lot uh, from almost scratch. I witnessed myself. I came in 2000, late in 2001 to Kabul, and if I share uh, with you my personal stories, you'll be shocked mm -hmm. to see how shocking the situation was in Afghanistan. Well, what's been the one thing that stood out for you in these last 30 years? Well, uh, when I came to Kabul, uh, it was totally a dark, a ghost city. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking out in the streets. Uh, I would barely see a person coming in, mm -hmm. passing by. If I go to Kabul today, and you must have gone to Kabul, and if you now please go and see the hustle bustle of the city now the crowd, the traffic jams, uncomparable. Okay. It, it is, of course, remarkable how far your country and the city of Kabul have come, but also it is interspersed with sporadic attacks and instances of terror. That's the bad side of the story. That is. While we have achieved so much in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and we have not said that we have completed our mission, it's a, it's a mission accomplished. We must complete it by a sustainable commitment to Afghanistan to build upon what we have achieved in the last 13 years. As I said earlier, a lot has been achieved. Afghanistan from scratches from zero today has an army itself. That's right. 352,000 police in the army. Afghanistan has its institutions, government, a progressive constitution. Afghanistan has um, uh, the infrastructure back uh, in place. 4,000 kilometers of roads in the last 13 years have been built. The, the big concern, of course, Ambassador, is you talked about the army, 300,000 plus. Is the Afghan National Security Force now ready to take on the security challenges that your country is going to be facing? That's a very important question. A full-fledged army is not the work of a decade or 12 years or 13 years. I think if this question is posed to a professional, he will explain to you further, or a more uh, elaborative way. Because you, it's not only a training of uh, the army, it's about the experience, it's about the strategic training given to them, it's about uh, meeting the challenges of today's insecure world, because threats are so complicated, so complex, uh, you can't handle it through your conventional means uh, of security preparedness. It's much more complex, but fortunately we have an army that is in place, that is meeting the challenge today, but needs further training, needs much better equipment. Uh, that's what we have been asking the world. So who's, who's, who's going to step in into this vacuum now that the Americans are leaving, NATO is leaving, and ISAF is leaving, and you clearly need more help? It's an ongoing process. Uh, one thing which I would like to clarify here is that this transition is not an abrupt, an abrupt transition. It is based on a process right. uh, called the transition. Transition happens whenever there is Afghan capacity in place. That's why it took years. Mm -hmm. I was part of the transition framework when we were uh, drafting years before. 
because it has certain uh, criteria, mm -hmm. benchmarks, which area can be qualified for transition. Therefore, and, and, and you are confident today, two months, uh, absolutely. In, in, as we are staring two absolutely months, in, you are confident that your security forces have the capability Absolutely. To... They have already proven. Okay. Um, in areas where our security forces have taken over, almost now the entire com transition process is completed. Just a month and a half, this will be fully completed. Our troops are doing much, much better compared to the foreign troops present in those areas when they face a challenge because they know better than any other foreign uh, forces. You, you, you must also be following very closely the developments in Iraq and Syria. And it's a similar situation, isn't it, in Iraq, the way the foreign forces left, and now there's a vacuum, and the vacuum has been taken over by the Islamic State. Aren't you worried a similar thing could happen in your country? Well, I mean, you see that the, the trends are very different. Mm -hmm. um, the current scenario that we're facing, the current challenges that we're facing, absolutely we can cope with it. But certainly the way how you see things evolve, uh, I am more concerned about the new emerging threats. Okay. We have not dealt with uh, fully with the threats that we've been facing the last 13 years. Now it's being built up. But the new trends, new uh, radical groups such as the ISIS. So, so, so the rise already, of the IS is something that worries you? Absolutely, because they've already linked up to some of the insurgent groups uh, in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. So uh, it's a worrying situation, but all I can say is that our forces, based on the threats that we had in the last 30 years, uh, were trained and they are meeting the challenge very professionally. Okay. In the last four months when the uh, terrorist attacks were on the rise, in large numbers, our troops proved that they were up to their task. Okay. And they, 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 they uh, fought them very vigorously, very bravely, and they defeated them. All right, hold but that the thought. the new threats, if they are coming, absolutely we need much more let, let, we, we will talk about the, the new threats and what resources uh, Afghanistan will need to fight those new threats, namely in the form of IS and, of course, uh, the terror infrastructure, which is being aided and abetted from the other side of the border. All that and more coming up on the other side. Stick around. This is Indian Standard Time. Welcome back to Indian Standard Time. We're in conversation with the ambassador of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, His Excellency Mohammad Abdali. Uh, so you were talking about uh, some of the some of the challenges that your country faces. Uh, most notably, there is the terror infrastructure, which is aided and abetted from the other side of the border. Your government has repeatedly uh, made reference to this, and just recently, there's a Pentagon report which has said that uh, the Pakistan establishment, the military establishment, uses uh, terrorist proxies as a hedge against Afghanistan. I want your comments and your thoughts on this report and the wider problem of getting the Pakistanis on board? I don't think this is a new report sure. or a new understanding that we should um, have about what um, terrorism is about and where it's being nurtured and where it's being supported. Uh, I think we have gone, we, have, we, have, we must go beyond um, uh, just having, uh, you know, the sense or the understanding of where the problem is coming from. Mm -hmm. To, uh, to action, because uh, that's what Afghanistan has been telling the world. And I think uh, if I can go back to, uh, to pre-9-11, uh, Afghanistan was at the forefront uh, telling the world that uh, the situation was evolving in Afghanistan that was going to pose a threat to the world community, not only to our region. Mm -hmm. And that was the case, and it, it, it was proven that way. Similarly, after 9-11, uh, we keep telling that uh, this double standard um, of certain states in the region is still not over. Uh, the one side, uh, side uh, calling them solo is an ally, the other side they're uh, in fact nurturing it. But, but so it's important that we go to action yeah. uh, because it's not new report. Uh, you know, reports of this nature have been uh, many times before as well. You, so you, it's not new to me. You, you talk about action. I mean, uh, even, even the government of India has been crying hoarse about uh, the terror infrastructure that is aided and abetted by the Pakistani military establishment, which, of course, we have borne the brunt of as well. The question is, what is this region and the wider world doing about it? Because clearly, there doesn't seem to be any change of tack or any change of direction or cha change of policy from the Pakistani establishment. Well, I would not complain from the rest of the international community, because okay. this is a problem of this region. Okay. First thing uh, we should do is uh, to make sure that the re the re this region become, 
become united mm -hmm. and fight its own problems. Uh, I think this is within our uh, reach uh, to uh, finish and, and go after it and resolve what, we, what, what, what causes this, this problem. Uh, I think there are countries um, uh, who can do very well, uh, such as India, China, Russia, these major emerging powers. I'm glad that there is a sense of recognition that this region must become united. Do, do if you, you go back? If you go back to the golden era of this region, mm -hmm. uh, the golden era of this region was this when this region was cooperating. If I go back to a uh, uh, year, thousands of years back, a golden era of this region, when Afghanistan was uh, playing the role of uh, a bridge for this region, mm -hmm. when Afghanistan had a critical, critical role on the Silk Road that, that we had, and fortunately that renewal of the Silk Road initiatives is still uh, is again in my in, in uh, the I was just, just going to ask you that. I mean, that's been one of the big themes of the Chinese president Xi Jinping, and in fact, the new Afghan president visited China. That was his first state visit uh, after becoming president. Do you see these regional powers, whether it's China, India, Russia, even stepping into this vacuum as the Americans and the Europeans leave? I hope. I hope they will. I see a change in certain countries uh, when they were when they were bystander. Uh, in, you know, in the previous years. Now they're coming up because they see what is happening to them as well. Uh, if, we, if, if we talk about terrorism, I think no country is immune currently in our region. That's true. Most of the countries in this region are rather, all of them are being affected one way or the other way. Therefore, I see a change in countries, including China. Uh, the recent Istanbul process meeting, a ministerial meeting in, 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 in China is an example. Mm -hmm. uh, you must have seen the statement. They are coming up to be, uh, to be uh, uh, an active partner in dealing with the challenges that we are all facing. So but I where, hope where, that every other, every, everyone else will also reciprocate that. Wh where does that, for example, leave the Pakistani establishment? I mean, you can't have a durable and lasting peace in Afghanistan without having the Pakistani establishment on board. Absolutely right. We must all become on the same page. Um, uh, there are relationships in this region uh, which can help. Uh, in fact, finding a common ground between all of us. Uh, we are glad that the Chinese leadership is taking uh, this uh, seriously, mm -hmm. uh, especially the question of terrorism because they have their own, they have problems, their own, problem. their own problems That's right true. now. And we're happy that they have a very good relationship with Pakistan. And uh, we hope that, that they will uh, use of that good relationship uh, that they have with Pakistan and, uh, and, and convince uh, those who are still not coming to terms on how we should tackle the situation, in fact, are convinced and be a real partner. As I understand, uh, President Ghani will be going to Pakistan in the next few weeks. Uh, he understands the importance of the Afghanistan-Pakistan relationship as well. What can he say or do in his time there which will change that country's tack and outlook and policy towards yours? Well, we have been trying our best as a neighbor peace-loving nation, we want a win-win for all. Okay. We don't want rivalry. We don't want Afghanistan to also become a crossroad of terrorism. We want Afghanistan to be the crossroad of cooperation, crossroad of trade and businesses between countries in the region. And of course, Pakistan will have the greatest stake in a stable and peaceful Afghanistan, as they say. So uh, we're more optimistic uh, that with the trends that we see, I mean, you, 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 you just a few days back, you saw that the Terror, terror uh, incident in Waga. Yeah, I mean they are all human beings. We are very um, hurt by seeing uh, the bloodshed every day, either in Pakistan or in Afghanistan or in India. So we hope that we that will be an eye opener for all of us. Okay, to all become one and and go against it. All right, hold that thought, please. We're going to come back uh, in conversation with the ambassador of Afghanistan and talk about the Indian engagement in Afghanistan. India has already committed to and extended more than $2 billion in aid. That's the largest India has given to any foreign country. Where's this money going and how is it helping rebuild Afghanistan? We're back in two minutes. This is Indian Standard Time. Welcome back. This is Indian Standard Time. We're still in conversation with the Honorable Ambassador of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. Uh, India has committed more than $2 billion in aid. Uh, India claims that this is the largest amount of money that we've given to any country overseas. But walk us through what are the areas that this money has gone to and what more would Afghanistan need? Because clearly what you need is far, far more than what you're getting from not just India, but the world community. Absolutely. Well, let me first express my deep gratitude for uh, the assistance that we've received from India. And we know 
that India is not a donating uh, nation. The largest amount of assistance that it has given anywhere is Afghanistan. True. And that, uh, that uh, is so, uh, so um, uh, you know, making us so happy and, of course, so grateful uh, to India. And this relationship, as you know, is very special. Uh, this is a relationship of the two peoples. It is not in a classic term, as I said earlier, a state-to-state -state relation. This is a relationship of the two people. A relationship of 1.2 billion here in the relationship uh, and with the 30 billion, uh, million population in Afghanistan. So this is, this is found in a very strong footing. Okay. We are very grateful. Uh, India's assistance in Afghanistan has been spent very effectively. Okay. Uh, what, we what have spent our money, the Indian assistance, on, on projects that are the highest priority for Afghanistan. Which is one of which is the parliament building, absolutely, there are power roads, projects, power road projects, construction. Absolutely. The Afghan priorities have been fully considered by India. We have, um, this is a very important to mention here, we have been receiving billions of uh, US dollars from True. countries around the world. And we are grateful to them as well. But India's assistance is very effective because they are giving the Afghans full authority on the use of the money that they are giving us. Okay. That is very important. So we have spent the money uh, from India on projects that are highest priority to Afghanistan. Therefore, it has made a significant change. I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, India's help with training the Afghan forces. Right now, it's a training role. I believe a little more than 1,400 soldiers are getting training. Uh, you have been asking for more assistance by way of weapons, light weapons, and so on. Where, do, where does that process stand right now? Are you happy with the progress of that process? Well, speaking frankly, um, while we are um, so grateful, so thankful, and we are very forward-looking uh, as well to this relationship to become even stronger and deeper in the future, as I said earlier, this is not a relationship of individuals. No yeah. government will change it. Yeah. It transcends any political issues between our two countries. But frankly speaking, um, as an ambassador being here a little more than two years, I'm not happy with the pace of the implementation of what we have agreed or what we are agreeing from time to time. I think we need to have a relook at the mechanism that, uh, that makes us implement. But what, what, what is it that, that worries you what, when you say relook? What, what, what is it that you well, mean? Well, the mechanisms that uh, will make uh, us action oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the mechanisms currently in place uh, are not so time bound as well. Um, uh, we have a strategic partnership that has no limit, as you know. Uh, that's not, that doesn't depend on government and changes, uh, mm. political uh, changes in any government, uh, either in Afghanistan or, or in India. Therefore, uh, the mechanism that is in place currently have not been, has not been followed uh, on a regular basis. Do, For do example, the, the, under the strategic partnership agreement, there are certain working groups, uh, technical working groups, the partnership council uh, at, the, uh, at the level of foreign minister and the national security council strategic dialogue that should take place annually, they have not taken place on time. Okay. So we must look at the mechanisms that are in place which makes the, the partnership agreement workable and actionable. Do, do, do you feel the Indian establishment's uh, reluctance or the slow pace, as you said, is born out of the fact that India has to keep in mind the sensitivities across the border when it comes to, say, for example, arming the Afghan army or providing you with some kind of Well, it's very weapon. important. Very important. You see, if the, if the enemy doesn't wait for us, we should not also wait to become more action oriented. Uh, security is a challenge uh, that, doesn't, that, doesn't, uh, that we cannot afford to wait uh, on, in terms of urgency of uh, doing uh, certain things. So uh, it's a very um, a relevant question that we must step up uh, our activities uh, to a challenge that is common. You know uh, the spillover effects of the situation in Afghanistan. We are equally affected and we will equally be affected in the future as well. Therefore, uh, rather than waiting for a challenge that will uh, knock on your door uh, one day, and then better respond. to preempt it. Be reactionary. And, and nip in the bed. All right. Um, in, in the last part of our show, I want to talk a little bit about something that you referred to earlier, that this is an organic relationship. It's a people-to-people -people relationship. The breadth of this relationship is quite amazing. I mean, I didn't know that there are, on an annual basis, more than a thousand Afghan students who get all kinds of scholarships and come and study in India. Walk us through what's happening on that front, on the, on the soft power front, if you will. Well, that's a very critical, critical area that you mentioned. 
uh, area of education. Uh, support from India is a fundamental assistance that will help Afghanistan in the long run. Uh, which, which comes the issue of um, uh, scholarships. We receive 1,000 uh, scholarships on an annual basis. Uh, today, there are more than 15,000 students studying in India. All right, 15,000 Afghan 15 students. 15 Afghan students, 1,000 Afghan students studying all over India. And I keep traveling uh, all around. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it uh, impresses me so much and makes me so hopeful of our future because they're going to be the leaders of tomorrow. That's right. And they're going to be the ambassadors for the two countries also to, to make this bridge even stronger uh, in the future. So that is a great achievement that we have. Uh, and we are very grateful to India for giving us this fundamental support. And that is to, uh, to give Af Afghans or the Afghan nation a manpower mm. that will run the country in the future. T talking about soft power, I believe that Hindi movies are very popular in, in Afghanistan. I mean, walk us through how, how that's uh, come through. Well, um, amazing. Uh, Have you watched any? Uh, absolutely. I, I do watch and I see film stars, whatever I, uh, okay. uh, when I uh, happen to be in a, in a function. You met with Amitabh Bachchan? Yes, absolutely, I did. And I met uh, Salman Khan and I'm uh, going to meet Shah Rukh Khan uh, okay. hopefully soon in the future because these are very old bonds. Uh, uh -huh. In fact, uh, they represent uh, the oldest ties uh, that Afghanistan and India have. Uh, in fact, they originate mm -hmm. uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, therefore, uh, it is so interesting, so exciting to see uh, uh, the stars that represent both nations. Do you, do you have any favorites in the in the in the well, film industry? All of them are my favorite. Okay. <laughs> all of them are my favorite because they are doing so well. And I, Amitabh Bachchan, when I met, what, uh, met him in his residence, I keep telling the story, uh, mm -hmm. how amazing, how touching it was. Uh, I don't want to take your time because that, right. the story is too long okay. to talk how uh, impressive he was and how he was looking forward to strengthen the cultural ties between Afghanistan and India in the future. I, I guess we'll have to leave that story for another episode of Indian Standard Time. Thanks very much, His Excellency the Ambassador Thank of Afghanistan. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for joining us. So there you have it. That's Indian Standard Time this week. If you've been watching, from me, Zaka Jacob, and the rest of the IST team, thank you very much. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.